Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager Channel. And uh, Happy New Year. I am recording this video on January 1st of 2023 at 2 a.m. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy for doing this. <laughs> I should be in bed. Uh, but um, I processed this image of the Sculptor Galaxy a few days ago and I want to get the recording done. Uh, that way I can save this project and close it. Uh, otherwise, if I let too many days go by, then I start to forget all the different processing steps that I did. So anyway, the Sculptor Galaxy. This is a, a galaxy that I came across. I seen pictures of this uh, a long time ago. Uh, well, I say a long time ago, about four years ago when I first got into the hobby. And it's always been a galaxy since I seen that that I've wanted to capture. Now early on I didn't realize just how low to the horizon this galaxy was for my area. I'm here in uh, Central Texas and uh, Sculptor does not get more than about 33-34 degrees above the horizon and the window uh, that I have is only about three hours give or take maybe a little bit more than that uh, and so I'm capturing data on this from about 20 degrees to about 20 degrees. So it's really not an ideal situation. Uh, guiding's difficult. I'm shooting through a lot of atmosphere, and um, yeah, challenging target. But I really wanted it. Uh, wanted it. Uh, you can say it was a uh, a bucket item on my list. So with uh, with the um, difficulty. The availability of this target to my skies, I decided to use two different telescopes to capture data on this. Now I used my Celestron Edge uh, to get just luminance and I got about seven hours or so and uh, that's what you're seeing here on the left. And then on the right I used my uh, 115 millimeter refractor, the AT115 EDT with uh, the ASI 1600 to get just the RGB data and I got about two and a half hours give or take per channel RGB. To further complicate issues I had problems with the flats uh, on the luminance. You can see evidence of that uh, in this picture. This is actually a combination of uh, two different data sets from two different time periods before and after I cleaned the filter. Uh, you see these squiggly lines. There was actually like a I don't know, a hair or a thread or something sitting on the luminance filter. And uh, it's been there for a while. I've been working around it and I finally decided to do something about it. And because uh, cause the flats were having a hard time getting that out. And anyway, you can see what I have here. So it's kind of a, uh, kind of a mess <laughs> over there on the luminance. So I have to do some cleaning up there. Now, basically the way we do this is, is pretty simple. Uh, all I do in PixInsight is I just need to register the RGB data to the luminance data. So that's uh, using uh, image registration star alignment. And uh, we can clear that, but literally it's using the luminance here as the reference and putting the RGB here. Now, sometimes you have trouble, and it did have some problems. Uh, if I just do this right away, it had a hard time finding a match. Uh, so what I actually had to do was make a copy of this and stretch it with an auto stretch. And I made a copy of uh, the red, just the red channel, and stretched that. And then I was able to align the two stretched copies. Uh, then after that, I took the stretched red channel from this 115 data and aligned the, the unstretched RGB data to that red. So that worked and that got uh, everything at the right level. Now before I did anything, before I did the registration, you can see here I, I'm calling this SPCC. So I did do some color calibration and uh, what I ended up with was this. So you can see that now uh, this RGB data from the 115 matches up 
with uh, with the luminance. Okay, so the next thing I needed to do was clean this uh, uh, luminance frame up. Now, getting a little sidetracked here, generally my approach here, I can treat this now as just standard LRGB. Uh, my approach is usually to uh, run star exterminator and remove the stars from the luminance, and I just toss those stars. And uh, I'll remove the stars from a copy of the RGB, and I keep those stars. That's what that way when I'm processing the stars near the end and adding the stars back to the final image, I'm just using the RGB stars. I'm not messing around with uh, with the luminance stuff. Uh, also, real quick, I did collect some HA data. Uh, I attempted to. I got a couple hours worth. Uh, by this point, it was late in the season uh, for my area and sculptor, and the weather was terrible, and the, the HA subs were just uh, just horrible. They, 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 they ruined the image, so we're just doing straight LRGB for this one. Now, uh, let's move over to a new workspace. And here we go. So remove the stars, and you can see more clearly the um, the uh, problems here. Fortunately, uh, they're not on the galaxy itself, and there's no IFN dust or anything that I'm worried about here. So this is an opportunity to use the clone stamp tool, uh, which is this guy over here. And I mean, basically, it it does exactly what it's what it what it how it's named. So you set a radius, and you set a softness and opacity, and then you just click in an area. And uh, I just kind of cloned out these uh, problems, and we can step through it, and you can see that, right? So I mean, it's not perfect, but it cleaned it up nice, so that when I stretch this channel, it's not going to be that noticeable, All right? And there it is. There's a stretch. Oh, I should point out, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Before I removed the stars, I did run Blur Exterminator against against this uh, luminance here. All right, and so there we go, we're stretched. And uh, I did do a little bit more tweaking on this before combining, and so there. I kind of darkened this because I... Uh, Usually what you want to do is try to match the luminance to the, to the RGB as best you can with the stretch. If the luminance is too strong, uh, it just kind of overpowers and kills the, uh, the color on the RGB. All right, and so here's our uh, color calibrated RGB data. And here is running Blur Exterminator against it. And we want Blur Exterminator against this because we're going to pull these RGB stars out, uh, which you can see here. And uh, here we go. These are the RGB stars. Now notice the colors don't quite look correct, but that's because they're not, they're not stretched. And even though we did use color calibration on these stars, uh, because we're only going to stretch them partially, it's, it's still going to need some work uh, to fix them, right? Because, <laughs> you know, you don't usually see purple on RGB stars. And this is the color data being um, stretched and renamed. And this should be, yeah, increasing saturation on it. Normally, I don't uh, touch the color until after uh, I combine the luminance. But in this case, I could tell that it was going to have some issues um, because the luminance was so strong. And so there, this is after adding the luminance. Now, another thing, normally, uh, I use... Uh, noise reduction techniques to really smooth out and blur the uh, color image. Uh, but when I did that on this one, it, it created a weird pattern. And I think maybe that part of the issue is that this is a, a heavily cropped view from, from the 115. Um, so what I decided to do is not blur it out this time. I did add the luminance. 
and you see this grain here, this really strong grain. This is usually why you have to blur your RGB data before adding the luminance because it it uh, kills all this pixely color fringing that you have around your target. Now the reason why I did it this way this time is because like I mentioned I didn't like the weird pattern. It just didn't look good smoothed out and I was hoping to leverage noise exterminator uh, and see how it would do with this. Alright, so as usual when I get to a point like this I like to start on a clean workspace. And so here we go and I'm going to step through uh, the rest of the work. Mostly curves. Uh, if we're looking at this we have a few things we have to work on. Right, there's a kind of a color in the background so we need to neutralize that and really that's just a matter of masking off the galaxy and um, pulling back on saturation. All right, so some curves uh, creating a little bit more contrast with the galaxy. Uh, you can see a mask on there. And yeah, see the difference? It may not be too noticeable on YouTube. But see how the background's got kind of this purplish, bluish haze. And all we're doing is on curves, we're just pulling back on saturation. And I mean, that, that really helps your galaxy pop against uh, a blank background. All right, increasing saturation on the galaxy now. Uh, we're inverting. What are we inverting for? I'm wanting to get rid of some green. Oh, oh no, you know what it is? It's this magenta around the edge. So we're inverting. There's a mask on there, right? See? So I did a tighter mask of the galaxy. So it's leaving all these green pixels. This is looking magenta when we uh, invert back. So this is where I would use the SCNR tool. And uh, yeah, see? See how there's less green after I do the SCNR tool than I invert back? Let's clear the mask. And so you can see there's still, there's less there, but now there's more green. So I got rid of this magenta color noise, uh, but that introduced green color noise. So I had to use SCNR tool again and uh, kind of found a balance. Again, it's not perfect. And at this stage, I'm really hoping Noise Exterminator will clean, clean this up. All right, so next we work on the stars. So here are our stars. I always uh, start now. My latest uh, technique with stars is I start with an arc sine stretch. And that is, where is it? This guy here. And it's right here, this first slider. And I just start with a little bit of an arc sine stretch. And then I finish off with a regular histogram stretch. And basically, I just stretch until I get it, there's two things that I'm looking at. I'm looking at how big the stars are, because I really like my stars nice and tight. Uh, but I'm also wanting to make sure there's enough stars, uh, enough of the smaller stars. I like to have as much of those visible as possible. So it's it's kind of it's it's like finding the balance between having really bright stars and plenty of the smaller background stars without blowing out anything. And so usually I'll do a preview and do some test stretches, initial stretches in the in the preview box to see how it's going. And here you can see. Now, like I mentioned earlier, because we're not stretching it all the way, uh, the colors are going to be a little weird here. So this is despite uh, despite having um, uh, the SPCC color calibration. Uh, because it's not stretched, the colors are still off. Yeah, and you can see, see how green these stars are getting? I think this is about as far as I got with stretching. And then, yeah, just uh, use a CNR tool to remove green. Here, I'll zoom back in. Yeah, see all that green? So, all right. Now we're going to invert, right, because we've got plenty of purple here. SCNR again, 
There we go. Yeah, and I guess this is where I left it. And then it's just using that um, uh, pixel math script uh, to put them back together. And so that's what I ended up with at first. And I mean, we're basically done here. I did a few more tweaks. Uh, actually, you see how it's got a PS here? So I had already taken this one into P uh, PS, <laughs> Photoshop. And what I'm doing in Photoshop is I'm adjusting the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the contrast and the, the um, saturation just a tiny bit. Now, yeah, I'm working on the uh, contrast a little bit more. I decided to dial it back. I felt this was a little bit too bright. And here, you see, do you see a difference here? It kind of pulled back on this, this kind of glow around the galaxy. What actually did that was the um, Enhance Dark Structure script. So, uh, or Dark Structure Enhance. I always say it backwards. Uh, but yeah, so I use this and what I wanted to do is try to darken up these dust lanes a little bit more and it actually, it did that, but it also pulled back on some of that noisy glow and actually didn't mind that. I didn't mind that at all. I thought that kind of helped with the transition a little bit. Now, noise exterminator has already been applied to this final image as well. And so how do you think it did on that noise? It did okay. I mean, it didn't eliminate it completely. Uh, it was able to smooth this out, but then it did too much damage. I mean, this area in particular looked real muddy, so I had to find a, a balance. So, I mean, eh, probably not one of my best images, but given the challenges that I had with this one, uh, overall, I have to say I'm quite pleased with it. All right, I mean, I had problems with the flats, uh, taking data from two different telescopes, uh, the AT115 EDT is a fantastic scope, especially for the price, but it's a little weak on the color correction. Now, generally, you don't notice it, but in this case, because it was cropped in so much, uh, we're seeing some of that in the stars. And so, you know, I had to work around that, and um, and it's not as deep as I usually like to go. I, you know, what what do we have on this, like... 12 hours, 15 hours, something like that. So it's okay. It's it's not bad and it produced a nice image, but it didn't quite get the resolution that I was hoping for. But again, I'm satisfied. I can cross sculptor off my uh off my list uh and I don't really ever have to go back to it. <laughs> it's funny sometimes when I uh image targets that are really low to the horizon, I feel like I'm stealing from the Southern Hemisphere folks just a little bit. So anyway, there it is. Uh, I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys think. Have any of you guys imaged uh, this galaxy before from the Northern Hemisphere? Uh, for my friends down in the Southern Hemisphere, I'm curious to know how long uh, this target stays up and how deep can you guys get on this one. So with that, clear skies and um, have a nice day.